Islam Court matters, the Federal High Court in Abuja has ruled that the Nigerian army has no powers to declare any citizen wanted. Justice Ijeoma Ojuku delivered the ruling in the case between one Isa Peri Brahma, a Nigerian activist in diaspora and the Nigerian army. In January of 2019, the army declared Brahma wanted for reportedly raising funds for troops and vigilantes fighting Boko Haram insurgents in the northeast. Brahma had launched a GoFundB campaign to raise funds to provide food for the soldiers in that part of the country. But the army described his action as fraudulent and said he and embarked on the venture ostensibly to defraud unsuspected members of the public, especially the international community, to fund subversive activities and personal lifestyle." End of quote. Now, following that declaration, Brahma filed a suit against the army for alleged defamation. Joining us live is Raymond in Kanabe, who is a legal practitioner to make sense of all of this. Good to have you, Barista. Thank you very much. How do you respond to all of this? Help us understand what is at play here. Okay, well, um, the judgment of my Lord Justice Ijeoma Ojuku uh, yesterday, um, even though, let me admit that I've not read the judgment, so I might not be too um, uh, in the right position to put it in context. But assuming what we heard reported in the media is anything to go by, um, the, uh, his lordship was of the view that um, the decision of the army declaring Dr. Perry Bremer wanted is unconstitutional to the extent that they had not complied with the due process before they could make such declaration. Uh, but in the media, it was reported in a way to suggest that the army does not have the power at all. I think it should be corrected that the army has the power, but then it has to go through some condition precedent before they could exercise that power. Now, in the case of Dr. Perry Brima, after uh, they made those allegations, they didn't, they would have applied to the court or first of all, apply to the court, get a warrant of arrest to seek his arrest. Mm -hmm. Is after they are unable to uh, uh, get across to him, they could now go back to that same court and I'll say, upon the warrant of arrest to get this uh, citizen, we have tried to do that, and having not gotten him, we intend to now get another warrant of to declare him wanted. Mm -hmm. And by that means, what that means is that every it will be a notice to the whole world that wherever Dr. Berry, Perry Prima is found the police authorities or the army authorities should be alerted. Mm -hmm. But having not done that, it smacks of a breach of his constitutional right to uh, dignity of his person. Because anybody who sees such a declaration would, um, would, uh, would have the impression that Dr. Perry Brima, the plaintiff in that case, was about fleecing unsuspecting members of the public of mm -hmm. their hard-earned resources. Yeah. And that's why if you, he brought an action for defamation of character. Right. Because the, that declaration had the uh, had the element of uh, impugning his image mm. in the eyes of unsuspecting members of the public. All right, just to help us again understand it, um, now that the army did not follow the due process, yes. does it mean that whatever they've said has holds no hold no water at all? Of course, that is the that is the necessary consequence. Mm -hmm. But like I pointed out, this action was founded on defamation. You understand? So I don't think what went to court. The, what went to court was a declaration whether the army has the power to declare a person wanted or not. Mm -hmm. That was, I would like to call it a by the way comment during the judgment. You understand? And if, when you read the report, the judge said, however, that was, a, that was some kind of a by the way comment. We lawyers, mm -hmm. decisions of courts are of two types. The ratio decidendi and also the obita dicta. The ratio decidendi forms what it follows from what forms the core issues before the court, which in this case was a, an action for defamation. Mm -hmm. Why the obita dicta was, is just a by the way comment made in the course of that judgment. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, since, like I told you, I've not read the judgment, I wouldn't know what actually informed that pronouncement. But by and large, that pronouncement, even before now, the Federal High Court Abuja in 2018 or so had made similar pronouncements. Mm -hmm. In that case, it was the EFCC that was the law enforcement agency in question. They declared a certain citizen wanted without complying with the due process of law. And the court was the view that the EFCC cannot do that without complying with this condition precedent. Mm -hmm. So whatever law enforcement agents, be it 
the police, the DSS, the army, wherever, you have to comply with certain checkpoints before you can declare a citizen wanted. wanted. Failure to do so will smack off a breach of their constitutional I mean, right. it's, it's, thank you for bringing in that clarification. You. Like you said, in the media, it sounded like, oh, no, they don't have the power. Yes, so, yes. But you're saying, yes, they do have the power yes. if they follow the due process. Exactly. All right. Having said that, you do know, I mean, as a Nigerian, that the relationship between uh, the army and the civilian is somewhat not smooth. Sure. With all of this that is going on, uh, how do you still rate the relationship between civilians and the Nigerian army? I mean, uh, uh, like I I keep pointing out this is another case of an unnecessary own goal scored by, by the by the uh, by public institutions you understand this is a clearly avoidable mishap that will continue to reflect bad badly on the image of the Nigerian army and also Nigeria as a country you understand because when international uh, even local uh, institutions rate the performance is the particulars of such of this kind of relationship mm -hmm. will help to further cast the army in the image of a very, um, uh, 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 in the, uh, as an institution that does not comply with uh, the provisions of the law. So uh, going to your question, it underscores once again that trade relationship between the, the police, the army, and also the citizens. Mm -hmm. I mean, moving forward, because we always talk about solution, sure. how best would the Nigerian army, for instance, salvage their already battered image, if you like? I mean, I don't, we keep talking about this every, t every now and again. It turns on building very strong and robust institutions that will function of itself without having the overbearing influence of the person who mans those institutions. In a bid to be so overzealous and to be seen as working or protecting its image, the army, the public institution as, as generally should always try to uh, uh, lay down certain checklists that should dictate their official actions. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, uh, in, in the context of this case, the, the proper agency or, 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 the, or the, 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 how would I call it now, the proper team in that in the army that handles such issue we should have a, a template right. of course of action in such a situation. Oh, Dr. Perry Brima seems to be defaming the army. What do we do? Okay, let's write to the legal department. How do we treat this? You go to the court. These are very simple issues. You go to the court upon a very strong affidavit. The court will give you a warrant of arrest. You mm. declare the person wanted. You de if you cannot get across to him, you go back to the court, you get under a warrant of arrest, declaring him uh, wa wanted. Mm. You understand? So it turns on how public institutions are being managed. Mm -hmm. And we must continue to uh, uh, reiterate that our public institutions must try as much as possible to make sure that their processes, their systems uh, comply with certain due processes mm. without the overbearing influence of the person who is manning those agencies. Uh, yeah, uh, just to add a follow-up question uh, to, to what you've just said, apparently there's a gap in the knowing how to do it. You know, so whose duty, is it a function of not having enough communication or you know, the army not understanding that this is the procedure? And if that it is, that's what it is, I mean, whose duty is it to bring them up to speed to say, you know, this is a due process for certain things. Even though you will certain powers, uh, there is just where you cannot proceed without following uh, due process? Oh, I don't agree that there is a gap of knowledge. It's not a, a, a function of knowledge gap. You understand? Every government uh, organization has a legal department mm -hmm. where issues that border on law should be routed to for legal advice. Right. So it's not a question of knowledge gap. It's more of a question of uh, those who are in charge of public institutions not uh, uh, wanting to do things the way it should be done. They allow their, their emotions mm. to get in the way of otherwise official business of government. The same thing we see playing out in the case of MAGU and the EFCC. Right. There's a serious case of defining cell truths outside the otherwise civil service rules or, that should guide those organizations. So it's not a question of knowledge gap, it's a function of, um, it's a character flaw from the people who man our institutions. And uh, it turns on perhaps training and advocacy from civil uh, society organizations and of course you, the media, to continue to put it on the front burner that things should be done in the right way. And of course the judiciary too, with this kind of judgment by Justice Ojuku, would continue to, we, we hope that someday uh, they might want to start acting in the way that they should. Mm. Thank you so very much, Raymond and Kanabe, for your thoughts. You're welcome.